Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Inside Artesian Football here on WREP 15 Sports. I'm your host, Eric Meyer, joined, as always, by Artesian head coach Carter Whitson, rocking the uh, playoff beard already, I it's see. It's playoff time, you know. I grew up a huge Philadelphia Flyers fan, always watch hockey, and it's playoff time. You don't shave till you're out. So he's got the beard going. It may be really, really long, and I saw some old pictures of him with the mustache. Hopefully we get to that <laughs> oh, point I don't know about that. here in the season. But Coach Whitson getting ready for playoff time. The Artesians got the first round by, as did a, several other teams across the state. But we'll talk with the coach about their first round game coming up. We'll also go back and take a look at the Artesians' senior night victory over the Plainfield Quakers. Up first, Coach, let's talk about that Plainfield Quaker matchup. And boy, what a uh, strange shot to start to that contest. You know, you sit there and, and we, we get a special teams play to score, and I get on the headphones and say, great job offense. You know, we haven't even been on the field yet, and we're already up 7 nothing. And then offensively, when we get the ball, we give them seven points and then take the, retur uh, the kickoff return exactly right back. So it was three crazy plays, kind of like starting birdie, triple bogey, birdie, and then just kind of figuring it out from the rest of the game. It was that you guys were able to figure it out for the rest of the game. It was the senior night to your seniors, as usual, contributing to that big-time win. Yeah, well. again, great senior class. We've talked about it all year. It's a big senior class. They've kind of set how they're going to do things um, when they were younger and, and have had success for a long time, and it was good to see them win on senior night, even though we already knew looking forward we were going to play another game at home and hopefully another one after that. So um, senior night's a little bit different when you know you're going to play at home again, but just to honor those guys and, and get their family out there on the field was a big deal. It was a big deal for you guys to be able to do that, a big deal for you guys to come away with a victory that maybe wasn't necessarily the ultimate goal of that contest, yeah. knowing that there's really nothing on the line there, yeah. and you guys were able to get out of there pretty healthy. As yeah, well. that's exactly right. Um, it's kind of like playing a soccer-friendly match. I mean, the whole regular season, that's all that really matters is can you get prepared for the tournament, and to get out of that game healthy and to have an, a week off to get healthier um, is exciting for us. You know, I was just watching our wide receivers the other day, and we look completely different. We're refreshed. You know, we're running faster. We got more guys back. So uh, the week off was really good for us. Offensively in that game, you hit some big plays, mm -hmm. and you had the guy you mentioned with the uh, kickoff return that you got there and the way the kind of the game started with the pump block as well. But mm -hmm. a guy that really stepped up for you was a underclassman, yep. a sophomore, Tyler Cox, kind of forced into action yep. a little bit more than what mm -hmm. he normally would, and he really took advantage of it yeah. and scored in three different ways. That's right. Tyler is, is going to be a big-time player for us and showed that Friday night. He showed it before, too. You know, we kind of look at we have a one-two punch with the backs. Isaac's a little bit bigger of a guy, a bruiser, and then, you know, Tyler's a little scat back type guy. Um, but, yeah, he comes in, fills in, and, and has a kickoff return for a touchdown, catches a screen pass for a touchdown, and has a rushing touchdown. Um, that's awesome to see, especially from a sophomore. And you go back to the, the very first score, that's, another, that's a freshman that blocks right. the punt. So um, it was good to see some young guys contribute. It is about senior night, but, you know, those young guys played for those seniors too, so it's pretty cool. And then defensively, you guys also were able to step up and make some big plays when you needed to, and really in the passing game, they weren't able to do anything. No, we, um, I, in fact, I think they had zero completions the entire game. We had one completion, and it was to Seth Galleon. So <laughs> um, defensively, that's awesome. You can't ask for anything better than that. Um, people are going to get a little bit on you, and that's high school football. But, you know, we kind of stuck to our plan. We tried to stop the run. The passes is not – they weren't known for a passing team, so we really focused on stopping the run. And then the pass defense was just special all night. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the contest on Friday night. There's the first possession on defense. We get a good stop here and fourth down. We block a punt. Weston Pemberton blocks it. And Garrett Miles returns it for a touchdown. Love seeing – you know, points scored not on offense, whether it's defensively or special teams. It just makes everybody's job easier. Um, so that's always great. And then here we go. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Their passing game just was non-existent. A lot of that has to do with the coverage, but even more of that has to do with the guys getting after it. Um, did give up a, a touchdown right there on a long drive. They uh, kick off to Tyler Cox. Kind of bobbles it around, which actually probably made the timing of it um, work out really well for him. But this, watch this cut right here. That's pretty big time right there because two guys had him kind of pinned on the sidelines. 
Little sophomore makes a play. Pretty fast dude, too. Runs on our four by one team. It went to state last year, so it's always good to see him with the ball in his hands in the open field. Back on defense, again, first down. They did have a big package that was having some decent success against us, but they just couldn't sustain it. Couldn't do it all night. There's Weston Pemberton and Will Nix making plays, and this is a huge stop right here on the goal line. Um, probably our third or fourth goal line stand this year. Those guys really don't give up ever, make them snap it again. Um, it's always good to see that. Here's their one completion to us. Seth Gallion with the interception right there, gets the ball back, gives it to the ref, and now he's ready to go back and play offense. Seth's had an awesome year. Um, the wide receiver group played really well. Michael Hopples had a fantastic senior year right there with a big conversion. Griffey hitting him on a sprint out. Um, and now we're going a little bit fast. Griffey makes a play with his feet right here. You know, the play was supposed to go left, but he has the ability to, to adjust and, and make things up on the fly. And has a good punishing finish run right there. We're in an empty set right here and get you know kind of in a third and long and, and have a good call on a screen play and he could have scored from 90 if that was the case but we were only about on the eight yard line not very many people run screens down there there we go defensively about six or seven dudes tackling their uh their running back and uh going backwards it's kind of what they do brian johnson another senior good uh, long completion right there to him getting brian back healthy uh, middle of the year was really beneficial to us another senior right here isaac osborne you guys know how isaac is he's going to run and fall forward um, score a bunch you know it's, it's good to have that one two punch he dinged up his shoulder a little bit but he'll be good to go um, for Friday night's game. Long play action shot right there to Matt Thomas. Matt's continued to get better and better each week. It's really good to see him this week refreshed and, and going fast. And there's Tyler again. I, I got Matt at Tyler on this one. I said, if you, just hit, if you just hit it north and south, you score on that, but he dances a little bit. But that's, you know, that's a sophomore still learning. And here's the weapon right there. Um, Caleb, obviously when Caleb's on the field, we're pretty good, we feel pretty good about points getting on the board. Third and short right there against that powerful big defense right there. And we get a great stop. Not only do we get a stop, but we get a turnover. Chris Brown, another senior, had his first start on senior night um, with the fumble recovery and tried to score with it. And there's Tyler again in the open field, hitting an inside zone. The offensive line did a fantastic job handling their pressure. You know, after the first play, we handled it really well and, and started to adjust. And, and here we go again. You know, Tyler's dancing around maybe a little bit too much, but regardless if he ends up in the end zone, we're pretty excited about it. Um, and then we're kind of rolling from there. You know, we. we they have 14 points, but we've got 31. We're feeling pretty good about that. Our defense will pin their ears back and attack at that point in time. And Ben Balserac, Weston Pemberton, that D-line is always playing really well. Travis getting in the open field again. Travis has a problem with making people miss. He likes to run people over, and I yell at him, but that's kind of who he is. Again, another outside zone here. Lead blocker with the tailback. O-line gets the play started. Wide receivers get the play started. And Travis goes for a little while out there. At this point in time, you're almost trying to run a little bit of clock instead of going super quick. So, you know, we still want to score always when we touch the ball, but you slow down just a little bit just to make sure that we don't give them the ball too many more times. There's another block punt. You know, to have two block punts in one game is phenomenal. Um, again, it just makes my job easier. Now we've got some twos in the game. Xavier Tonitis always comes in ready to play. Great to see Ben Balserac carry the ball. You know, he's a guy that played tailback earlier in his career and has moved to mainly defense. We were trying to get him in the end zone there. Had one wrong, uh, penalty called against us that would have got him in the end zone, but it was good to see him with the ball in his hands having fun on senior night and us finishing the game like we want to. Like you said, you heard a lot of the seniors' names mentioned in there, some younger kids too, but yep. uh, everybody really contributing, getting a chance to get into that uh, final game there against Plainfield. Yep, again, you know, you want those seniors to have fun in that last game, but you also just want to get healthy. You want to get out of there, and you already know your playoff draw, and it's about, you know, it's about that now. Speaking of the playoff draw, it'll be the one team that you guys didn't see during the regular yep. season. The Bloomington North Cougars, their record, um, not the best in the world. They've won a couple of games. They play in a pretty tough conference. What do we know about head coach Scott Bless's ball club? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, you look at these guys and you don't look at their schedule or look at their record and, and you know, think how good they are. They play a bunch of really good 6A football teams in their conference. Um, so, you know, they've got two solid wins. One of them was against a common opponent, Greenwood, and then New Albany was a good win for them. 
Um, but, you know, we don't look at their schedule too much and, and say, okay, you know, they're 2-7, and seven, they're not any good. They're, these guys have the potential to be really good. Saw them two summers ago down at uh, IU's camp, and they're a big group of kids. Um, Coach Bless has been there a long time, so they'll be ready for it. Um, you know, they're probably looking at it like, all right, we played a tough schedule. We're ready for the playoffs, so they'll come in ready to go, and it, it'll be a good battle. Coach Bless coming from that long line of coaches mm -hmm. in his family that have had a lot of success at Avon, Columbus North. His dad also a coach uh, at UND, I yep. believe, at some point as well. So he's got a lot of coaching experience, a lot of experience on his side. What are we going to see out of his ball club offensively and defensively on Friday night? Yeah, offensively they're a little bit different. Um, they'll, they'll get – They'll get in the wing back and run the triple option. They'll go empty. They'll try and spread it out. They'll try and run inside zone triple option against you. Uh, they got a freshman quarterback that I think is potentially a really, really good player. Um, he's already, you know, he's, he's been playing for him all this year. He's growing up. He's probably not playing like a freshman at this point in time. He's going to have a great career. We got to, you know, focus in on him and stop him. And, uh, again, stop the run and, and make him try and beat us through the air. Defensively, what are we going to like to see out of them as well? Uh, very similar to maybe what we saw versus Greenwood, a kind of a 4-3 cover four um, defense. They'll move around quite a bit on the defensive line, trying to make it hard on our O-line. Uh, versus Southport in their last game, they switched to a little bit of a nickel personnel because Southport spins it around pretty good. Um, so, you know, I don't know what they're going to do versus us. If they're going to go nickel, you know, it'll change our game plan. If they're going to try and load up the box, that'll change our game plan. But we've kind of worked all of it for the last two weeks, so we'll be ready for it. Like you said, change the game plan. I know coaches, a lot of times you hear people talk about scripts yeah. for the game, but depending on what they do, you have kind of two different yeah. things that you're going to go with with there. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. You never know exactly. You know, they get to work all week, too, and they get to game plan. And there's an old saying, you know, you want to see God laugh, tell them your plans. That's kind of how I look at scripts. Like, yeah, I can call this. Well, what if the next play, you know, is on the goal line? That's, <laughs> the script really doesn't matter. Right. So you want to have a plan. You want to have openers. Um, but you really just need to be ready to adjust to what they do versus you. So it's the big time. It's it's win and go home. Mm -hmm. Or lose. If you lose, you go home. Yep. Win, you keep going on. Yep. So it's you know it's a one and done thing going on here. And you guys have uh, I'm sure had a good week there of practice. A few days actually during fall break, and then are able to get back to the regular thing here. Now yeah. the school's back. No, we we have, and and we're ready for it. You know, we talk about all year winning the state championship. That's that's really the goal. So all regular season, you're trying to get ready for this tournament. And this is a special group of kids. I've seen them for two years now, and now they're finally realizing, okay, it's here. It's not just talk. You know, I, I won a state championship as a high school junior. Um, I won three Big 12 championships. I won a TGT jacket. I've seen it all. I've seen the good players, the good teams, and how to do it, and I think this group has that. You have that group that's coming in and trying to get the uh, victory. It'll start against Bloomington North before we leave. What are some of the keys to the game? things that you're going to have to do to essentially score one more point yep. to Bloomington North and move on. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, um, you know, well, that's all we need. We'll score one more point in them, and we'll be perfectly happy with it and find out who's next. Uh, but, again, offensively, we always talk about it. We need to be able to spread the ball around. That doesn't mean run pass percentages. It just needs to mean the ball's going everywhere, getting in our weapons' hands, um, being good up front. You know, we're going to play fast like we always do. And then defensively, you know, it's an attack mode type type game. You know, we need to get after it. We've seen these guys now for two weeks of preparation. You know, we were ready to play Tuesday after practice. We're like, let's just let's get it on. We're we're ready for these guys, and and they they, they will be too. But that bye week's different. You know, it just creates a different timeline for us. So we'll be ready to go. All right, coach, we appreciate it. We'll see you out there Friday night. All right, thanks. Artesian head coach Carter Wilson here inside Artesian Football Martinsville. Coming up on Friday night, it is their opener in the sectional against Bloomington North. Get out there and support the Artesians as they're looking for the sectional championship and even more of the 29 miles headed toward Lucas Oil Stadium. It starts Friday night at home against the Martinsville Artesians and the Bloomington North Cougars. As always, we'd like to thank the coach for coming in, for the head coach Carter Whitson, along with the RTV2 class who helped produce it even through the fire drill we had yeah, here. That's right. I'm Eric Meyer. We'll see you again next time inside Artesian Football. <laughs>